Got it. Okay, thank you. So pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted in person and via remote means in accordance with applicable law. This means that members of the public body as well as members of the public may access this meeting in person or via virtual means. In person attendance will be uh, at the meeting location listed above and it is possible that any or all members of the public body may attend remotely with in-person attendance consisting of members of the public. The meeting may also be accessed via, um, <laughs> I'm missing some notes, um, I, I believe via the, the links with the town um, or via the Zoom when required by law or allowed by the chair persons wishing to provide public comment or otherwise participate in the meeting, uh, they may do so by in-person attendance or by assessing the meeting remotely as noted. Additionally, the meeting will be broadcast in real time uh, via Zoom. Um, oh, I read the wrong one. So I'm glad I know that you are all super patient. <laughs> so we're gonna start this over and I'm going to read the one that Matt circled in red for me. I thought it sounded wrong. All right, starting over. Um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner uh, via Zoom. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the, uh, the town website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And I will need to take a roll call um, to assure that everyone's <clears throat> um, audio is working. Uh, Jenny? I am here. Thank you. Uh, Christy. I am here. Great. Arthur. Yep, here. Rachel. I'm here. And um, Matt. Present. Thank you. And Jennifer, thank you for being here. <laughs> and I believe we are officially able to begin. So, Julian, I am um, I'm double dipping, and I apologize. I can give a quick. Oh, hello, Joy. Oh, I see Joy. Hello, Good Joy. Is your audio working? Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, hi Joy. Very good. So, I guess we we would look to approve the minutes that were sent out in May, but I think, given the time, if nobody objects, we should. Um, Move to Jennifer uh, Moyston, who is, as I said, our, our co-host slash um, our liaison slash also uh, our guest speaker, our first guest speaker tonight, um, and, and just sort of move the conversation to her since we wanna respect uh, her time. Um, does anybody have an objection with that or, or wanted to do the minutes first? I support that. So, so I just, I wanted to say that um, this conversation started about a year ago when we saw the Northampton um, Cultural Council uh, running into a few issues relating to um, race, equity, diversity, and, and particularly a piece of indigenous art that turned into kind of a, a big, um, uh, I would say a challenge within, the, within their group, within the organization. And so we reached out to the town manager's office at the time and asked if there's anybody we could speak to about the nascent uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion office in the town. Just thinking that no matter where that office was at um, and where we were at as a cultural council that we could maybe benefit from establishing a really clear, firm partnership with the DEI office from the get-go. Um, and so right away, uh, Jen, who's been, and I'll, I'll let you, I, I'm not gonna try to characterize your career, you can kind of describe for us how long you, you know, what you've done with the town, but, but suffice to say, been a long, lifelong uh, Amherst resident and member of the town council team, or town office's team. Um, Paul put me in touch with her, and we've had several good conversations since then, and 
really have been just looking to find a chance to, to bring, uh, bring her in and kind of hear about what DEI is doing. And there's several big updates, including recently hiring a director for DEI. So um, I think this is just sort of an introductory conversation between the ACC and the DEI office to sort of get a feel for um, what some of the goals and objectives that, that you hope to pursue look like and, and maybe some ways that the ACC can engage with those. Sure, thank you. So um, my name's Jennifer Moyston and I am a lifetime resident or community member of Amherst. I grew up here, I went to school here. My kids have gone to school here. I've worked for the town for nine years and previously I was the administrative assistant to the town manager's office in the human resources department and um, actually kind of wore a lot of hats. I was the human rights uh, staff liaison, as well as a community, I'm also a community participation officer. So when our government changed its charter, it kind of freed up everything I did previously was very administrative task driven, um, you know, town supporting town meeting and licensing, but licensing moved downstairs and town meeting went away. And the council got their own liaison or their own staff. And so I really, um, just had a little bit of time, not a lot. I would hate to say that I had a lots of time, um, but, and I kind of dove into the work of DEI. And so as a member of the town first, before an employee, I definitely have seen and heard and, and experienced, you know, things that shouldn't be based on or what appears to be based on race. And so, um, that part of me that thinks that Amherst is so great would like to continue to see Amherst continue to be so great by kind of uh, stepping stepping up a little bit when it comes to race and, and equity. And so I also feel that as a municipality that we have a responsibility to move forward with racial equity, right? And so with that being said, um, we started a core equity team here. I, I mean, I sit on several DEI oriented committees and boards and committees, but in-house we have core equity and there we have a training. And so the idea was that this training would go throughout town because in order for us to be able to truly um, to move forward with equity, we have to kind of do that internally. And we need to know that everybody has the same, the access to the same language and same knowledge so that no one can say, well, I didn't know that that was an inappropriate word, or I didn't know that that might make someone feel some way. So it's really just the training was to give everyone a basic understanding of, of DEI, kind of like an ABCs of DEI, and that the town has a responsibility. So um, since and then somewhere in there, I've been trying to help support community members that have cultural events um, so that they can be seen by a broader audience, because that is one of the best ways to kind of break down some of the barriers that are here in town by people actually experiencing what other cultures do and, and how they celebrate. Um, and f no one, nothing gets people together more than food and music. So it's always great. Um, and I was doing a lot of work in the community and the apartment complexes working with Amherst Rec. And then the pandemic kind of happened and it, it stopped all of that. And so once that stopped, it kind of changed the way the community participation happened. There's actually three of us, myself, Angela Mills and Brianna Sunrid are all the community participation officers. And so we, so it kind of changed the way that we had to envision community engagement which was we can no longer anticipate people to come to us. And um, we were really trying to go to where the people who we don't hear from so much are, right? Like in the world of municipality, we there actually we create rules and make policies and procedures. And we don't have equal representation or we don't have fair representation of what our commun community looks like on these different boards and committees that are making the decisions for everyone. And so part of the, being a community participation officer is kind of trying to open that box and let people empower the community to know that their voice matters and that the things that they say and the experiences that they have are valued. And um, we need to hear that to make the world, to make the, the town a better place. 
And so um, right now I'm in the midst of planning Juneteenth. So we have a really large celebration this year. It starts off on Saturday um, afternoon morning with a, a heritage walk. And then we kind of move over onto Sunday with the Jubilee on the Common. So all very, very exciting. The nice thing about the Heritage Walk is it's direct stories from the descendants of Amherst residents, the first Black and Indigenous people that we can date back to in Amherst. So that's really exciting, the Bridges family. Um, and then the Jubilee, who doesn't like a good party every once in a while, right? So it's always a nice um, celebratory event, which if you kind of look back at the history of Juneteenth, that was that was a big, that's a big piece of it, right? Even from the start of Juneteenth where people are celebrating. So kind of back to the training and the purposes of that was to kind of, you know, I, I kind of, I don't like to typically look at things from a hierarchy perspective because the hierarchy is kind of driving me a little bit crazy. Everyone should just be treated nicely. But, um, you know, we need the support and guidance from the top up in order for it to go all to flush down and to be really, uh, acted upon by the rest of the staff. And so part of it is, is that it's not just the staff that needs it, but our boards and committees, because we have so many folks from some who have different point of views and don't necessarily understand or realize that, you know, there's a whole community out there that isn't being heard and isn't being seen and, and that they need to be brought in and their voices need to be heard. And so we're really working hard to kind of connect, you know, connect all of that. So beautiful thing is the DEI directors um, will be starting on July 1. The nice thing about having Pamela come in is that she has started DEI department several, like I think twice in two different um, schools. And so, you know, it's one of those things where we'll partner. She understands and knows the way to implement and move forward. And I understand the culture of the town and the culture of the town government itself. And so together, I think that that will make a really great combination. You can't have one without the other. And so, you know, I'm just here. It's, a, you know, it's kind of a weird time because I think like last year, if we had had this conversation, it would have rolled out a little bit different, but it's a little bit hard because the director's coming in. And so we will have to have her come in and join. But I know one of the top things for us to do is to create a training program. Problem with that was like just she and I could not train the whole entire staff. We've got a staff of you know, when we include all of our part-timers who would need it too, of 500 plus, right? So we can't train everybody and then train the board and committees because it would take a year to get that done. And then the first group who was trained will be looking for more. And as you know, DEI trainings can't just happen once a year. They need to be part of an ongoing conversation. They need to be embedded in the things that people are doing on a day-to-day -day basis in order to move forward in a progressive way. So that's just kind of where I'm at right now. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, so any suggestions, ideas, info on how the Cultural C Council can continue because we are dedicated to increasing diversity and accessibility and kind of just jumped in. We're not quite sure where to go, who to contact on what we can do, where we can find information and connections, what we shouldn't be doing, <laughs> um, who we speak with, how we, you know, form alliances. I mean, anything really. Yeah, I mean, I typically tell most boards and committees, like one of the things about DEI work is it's kind of like you have to move out of your comfort zone a little bit and outside of your immediate group and kind of expand that horizon, which is really the nice thing about celebrating so many different cultural events, because then you're there and you're usually around um, folks that you don't necessarily um you know, that aren't in your inner circle or your inner group. And so I always suggest, like, I don't know how many people know, this was my thing about local government. Before working here, I never knew we had boards and committees. I didn't know the town. I didn't know anything about the town and I don't know that I necessarily cared, right? And so there was a, a, a policy or something that was made that directly affected me. And then I would maybe have something to say. But outside of that, um, I didn't necessarily 
know anything. And so I would say one of the things is that you have to be visible because people, I don't know who, it's like the same people know that the ACC is here, right? And that's fantastic, but you need to broaden that. And so it's, if, if you're not putting yourself out there, it, it's hard to broaden it. So I do say like, you know, if you're going to Juneteenth, make sure that you have conversations with folks, um, attend other events that are going on town, I would try and table at as many events. And I don't, you know, and I know that you guys do, do grants, I don't know how far your reach is or or you're able to reach, like, are you limited to Amherst or can you find artists outside of Amherst to support or to bring into the town? Um, so, you know, and then I would say we would have to have the DI director come in and kind of help you guys move forward. And then, yeah, I'm thinking of the Public Arts Commission, so I'm so sorry. I apologize for that. Yeah, it's all, you know, all of that's true. We have increased our visibility, but, you know, we probably could do that more. And we can bring, you know, you don't have to live in Amherst to get a grant. You just have to serve the Amherst community. Right, which would make me lead, like, think about, you know, the different artists in Holyoke or Springfield that you could kind of have come in and do different things here in Amherst or even in Williamsburg or Northampton for that matter. But just, um, but I think, you know, we would want to kind of do, a, make sure that we've done a solid hard, hard search for Amherst first, because we always, of course, want to support our hometown. Did that, you had a lot of little questions there, so I don't know well, how to answer I, I them mean, all. I'm not even sure how to, we're still working on what, how to figure out what our questions are. So, or what questions to ask, or, uh -huh. so that's what why questions? it was like all these pieces of, you know, yeah. who and where and what and what to do. And yeah, I mean, we're, it's steps at a time, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can only take baby steps at first, right? I would totally agree with that. Um, and Leah? Yeah, I was, I don't know if my camera is on right now because my computer's kind of glitching. But um, I was gonna ask when you talk about outreach, is there, we've been trying to do like social media and then kind of like event or we're doing like a video showcase, but do you have specific ways like, how would you suggest really getting the word out there, like in general, with like, to reach like, like, do you have advice on how to reach like diverse and like um, geographically wide groups of people? I mean, I, I think that it's one of those things where I was gonna say, you know, you guys could always put stuff in, in the PGOs at the different schools for the parents. But again, I kind of feel like that creates one of those bonds where it's kind of the same yeah folks that you you already deal with but again like um you know working with Amherst Rec is always great because they do a lot of outreach in the different communities and neighborhoods in Amherst and so that's always that's kind of who I tag along with like just like hey and then we have the new Crest program so they're going to be doing plenty of community outreach as well and so I would suggest we have um this one might be a little bit too short, but we have an event on the 11th at Village Park, and then we have another event um, on the 23rd at Rolling Green. So it's possible that if you know, if you guys were just to kind of show up, maybe not table the one at Rolling Green, you probably could. The one at Village Park is the space that we're using is a little small, but meaning just to meet other people in the community and find out what kind of things that they're they would like to see yeah. um, happen would be good too. What are you and, doing with, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm, go ahead. What are you doing with Village Park? Because I live in Village Park and- Oh, I just sent them- anything. Yeah, I just, I gave them a flyer last week and so they were supposed to distribute it. I Maybe I should resend it. But we are, we are having a, the Crest Department is coming to kind of do a, like a community outreach event. Um, you know, Crisis, I, so Crisis Community Responders for Equity, Safety, and Service, which was a community-driven 
new department that was created similar to in the same way that DEI was. It was a push from the community. And so Cresta's real motto is kind of to be proactive and to go out into the community first before having to respond so that people, at least their faces look familiar or they know of them because trust is of an issue with everyone, right, to some degree. And so, um, you know, it just seems a little bit easier if you're if if you already know folks or if you're more proactive in 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 your outreach in that manner. And so, we'll be having a barbecue right there by the office on Saturday. At what time? Um, I let me. So you're going to go to different. Twelve to two. We are. Different places around Amherst and talk to people. Yeah, and introduce the Crest responders and the, and the Crest director and the DI director. You know, when we do a place that's large like Rolling Green or the Boulders, it you can in, we can invite many more, right? So we can actually have DPW come up in one of their big trucks. It's like an all inclusive, uh, you know, opportunity for everyone to do a little bit of outreach, right? Because there's a lot of space there, you know, and DPW has some really cool trucks that might attract the children. And then, you know, we're feeding everybody. Those are ways to get people out of their homes. Sometimes the kids come running over, mom, can I go have a yeah. cheeseburger? They want to know where, and, you know, and then you, um, and the child tells their parent, well, outside with these folks, and then the parents come out. So we all usually like to work with Amherst Rec when we do these two, because they can help provide stuff for the kids to do Nikki over, um, at Amherst Rec does a great job setting stuff up for the kids. Um, and, you know, I kind of feel like a lot of things are about outreach and just connecting with the community because I think it would be really good for you guys to kind of have an understanding of what the community wants yeah. so that you guys could make that happen. Because you guys, you know, do have great, um, you're generous with your grants. And so, you know, but we have to make sure it's kind of meeting the needs of everyone, right? Like, so it can be spread evenly across. And then Rachel? Hi, Jennifer. It's finally, it's nice to finally meet you. I've heard a lot about you from my friends, you know, who are um, kind of active in the Crest Initiative. And also, I'm sorry I missed the um, reception at the Groff Park that was oh. hosted by the League of Women Voters. I heard that was yeah. very successful. So it thank was. you for all the, the work that you, you have been doing and continue to do. So what um, you just said, and also to follow up a little bit with Robin's question about outreach is that, um, yes, I think it's easy to just become siloed in our respective little you know, worlds and whether, you know, it's uh, it's grant making, whatever. So one thing that occurred to me is, is there any opportunity for different, um, for members who serve on different committees or um, councils within the town government to actually meet each other? Because, you know? Sorry, because I was just about to say that I feel like learning about DEI work in the same way um, we're learning about work that's related to accessibility is like, it's not so much like we're going to achieve equity by doing X, Y, and Z. It's more like the lens through which we operate all the time, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, I think I think it makes sense what you're saying about like outreach and just talking to different people who, you know, cause we're all volunteering because we're interested in, in creating and, and furthering community in this town in various ways. So I personally would love to meet other volunteers who serve um, other committees doing very different things, but, you know, that could spark a lot of interesting ideas about how we might want to um, communicate with or reach the other people that we don't get to see or hear no. from as much. Oh, and then also it would help just to kind of validate some of the different experiences that everybody has. I mean, I can't really see that there's a lot of that. I mean, that sounds like a full positive way to uh, initiative to have. And so I can look into how we can try and with the other community participation officers on how we can try to expand on that and, and make that happen by having some type of event or, um, you know, here at town pre COVID, the town manager used to have meetups with the town manager. And that would be when a staff person from each department would go and have a meeting and they would sit down with Paul and the, and the people, the response from the staff was that, you know, I've never from the library, I'd never met anybody from DPW, right? Like, and so that was really good. And so I, I, I can, I don't think I've ever really thought about the committees like that, but you're absolutely right. And then also it gives a better understanding of kind of how you can 
how the committees can help support each other and the different work that they're doing. Right. And, and so I just, that's a fabulous idea, Rachel. And so I, we have a CPO meeting tomorrow. And so I will bring that up and then I can send you guys an email of kind of what our thoughts were about that. Thank you. Thank you. Because when you said that too, about the DPW, you know, workers and being at this reception or, you know, event coming up, I thought, yeah, I'd be interested in meeting them because we see them working all the time. Yeah. It'd be nice yeah. to meet them too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then Leah? Um, I was wondering, do you have like a calendar or a way to access like when the um, events, like the community outreach events are? Yeah, so um, we, I just, I don't have much from the, after the 23rd because it's always hard to get in touch with someone from the Boulders and Caymans um, because they, the complex is over there. And so we're still trying to get in touch with those two groups um, and actually Caymans because they own Colonial Village and then they own the small one over in North Amherst behind the Cumberland Farms, right? Those are two, you know, in that small complex, I don't think gets much community outreach. Wayfinders is always really nice. That's the butter, not butter, butter, not apartment complex off of Long Meadow Drive and Olympia Oaks that's parallel to Village Park across the, the woods there. Um, but wayfinders are usually really good about community outreach and wanting to, to work with the town in, in different initiatives. So I would suggest if you guys wanna do something that that's a good, a good group of people. Um, Village Park can kind of be hard sometimes too. So I was really glad that we got in there, but. Um, you know, the thing about having one in the boulders is that you can pull the people, there's like five complexes over there, plus the houses across the street. And so we're going to try and pull all of those folks over to that one side. And it, the, the field over at the boulders is so large that we can actually get everybody. We just need a confirming date. We did one pre-COVID, so I couldn't see that they wouldn't be. But when their management changes, it's not something that the person in the office actually answers. It has to go to uh, the district level because there's liability issues and such, I would assume. So just so, a little more complicated. Jennifer, that, I'm gonna jump in because I, you reminded me of the two things that are kind of most challenging for us as a cultural council, um, at least when, as it you know, relates to DEI. Uh, number one, we've, we've really worked hard to um, diversify the recipients of our grants. Uh, a lot of public info sessions, you know, we, we've been trying as many different formats as we can to just sort of, you know, get a more diverse range of grantees so that we can support, you know, the big cultural institutions and also the individual artisans and, and people from all walks of life. Um, and you're just making me think, you know, that if you are having events, we would love to piggyback onto some of those events and just share the information about these grant opportunities that are out there. This is a, compared to the big academic grant, the big grants, fairly simple grant process. However, if you've never written a grant before, it's not a very simple grant. So, you know, we're, we're all about um, being a part of community outreach and, and please, you know, as you and, and Pamela Nolan, Nolan Young are making your um, agenda of, you know, where you're gonna go and when you're gonna go there, if you're looking for folks to help um, broaden access to town government, uh, think of us, you know, because we would, we would certainly, I, I mean, I can, I'll volunteer myself just as, as a member and I'm sure others would too. We would certainly be happy to come along and help you uh, and help um, interested parties learn about the grant process and you know what it entails. I would also say, and this, this kind of transitions to our next part of the, the meeting as well. Um, I would also say that we are, uh, we have quite a bit of membership turnover, several terms are ending and you may have seen Joy's chat message just now. Joy is moving out of town. So, we're, we're actually um, in the process of getting together a group of applicants for our next, you know, for three, at least three slots on the cultural council. So we would love to, in the same breath, you know, speak to some members of, of the broader community and see if more folks want to come uh, put their name in the hat in, or in, in terms of being members of the council. So, you know, grant applications as well as, as well as council members, both those things, I think we'd love to work with you um, on just expanding access to. Yeah, and I so I would definitely suggest that Juneteenth will be a great and excellent. I mean, you just the, the diversity of people who attend who attended last year was so great.
great. We had elders and, and the youth and it was just a really great time. So I, I do suggest that um, you can start there, right? Like, and um, the heritage walk is one way and then, and then there's the Jubilee on the common, but I think that both of those events will enable you to kind of connect with folks that you might not connect with, you know, okay. had you well, not I'll, attended that. I'll shoot you an, I mean, if you have like, are you suggesting a table, like we would set up a table or what, what's, what do you I think? I think the table would, will definitely be hard for the heritage walk, right? So, um, <laughs> uh, you want us to walk with the table? Yeah, and yeah, you know, bottles of water. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I think if you, I mean, I, you guys, if you want to do a couple cases of water out on on the Jubilee, and even maybe for the Heritage Walk, that would be helpful, right? You just sit there and talk to people as you're giving them water, um, and then again, happy to come on the 11th to Village Park, and happy to have you. Definitely happy to have you guys join when we go to Rolling Green on the 23rd, which is, I have a flyer for those. Let's see. That's July 11th and 23rd? Yeah. Nope. June. Oh. <laughs> nope. I just, you know, we just, we just stay going. So the 23rd is from 4.30 to 6.30 at Rolling Green. Okay. And they have a pretty big space. So, you know, we can set folks up in different ways for that one. I just, mm -hmm. I need to get through the one at the 11th to really start diving into the one on the 23rd. But, and what time is the one on the 11th? Um, noon to two. Noon to two. And I will be there. Great. Just have to walk up. Hopefully they will tell people because they haven't told anybody else right now. Yeah, I know a couple of folks out there, so I might just reach out and see if I can't have them start to kind of spread the word. Yeah, I actually grew up in Village Park when I was young, oh. so um, different was, management now. Different well, it was a, it was I, you know, I always call it a village. It takes a community, and that's kind of what it was when I grew up there. Um, you know, everybody's dad, somebody's dad was everybody else's uncle, so you know, it was great. Um. So I want to move us along just for the sake of, of time. And, and Leah Carver has joined us. Hello, Leah. Leah. Um, I'm not sure if Sean's going to be able to join us because I know he was off to the library. So, um, but, but we'll, we'll, hold, we'll hold your item until 6, if that's OK, just for the sake of. Um, you should be done around 6, I think. OK, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> we um, all have dogs and cats. So I'm, I'll keep moving through the agenda unless folks have other questions or, or comments for Jennifer. I have a quick question. Um, Jennifer, how did you choose the venues and the locations at which to host these um, specific kind of um, gatherings? Yeah. So I'm not necessarily always very data driven to find out that, you know, <laughs> our, our, we're missing a lot of our black and brown and um, folks in on boards and committees, but you can see it, right? And so, um, that's that's a popular that those are communities that we don't we rarely hear from and so it and they're usually the ones that are um, affected most by whatever policy or procedure that we move forward with and yeah. so I, I think that is you know I think that COVID kind of showed us that too to a certain degree there was a lot of folks who um, it was great that the, the public health department was going out with mobile but it, there was like a lack of access there um, to some of the places, whether it's transportation or, or trust. I mean, it was just, and I also have grown up in, in apartment complexes. And so part of my thought process is, you know, um, having grown up and even lived as an adult in most of the complexes out here at some point mm -hmm. that not really do I hear conversations about local government when I'm going to the trash can, I hear people maybe perhaps complain about the experiences that they had going into our town buildings, but I don't necessarily hear um, people talking about local government. And so when I got here, and I'm always a little bit embarrassed, but this is my story, right? Each department here in town hall uses the word warrant, but they use it for something different, slightly different, right? And so, from my understanding of warrant, you were going to jail. Like that's, that's, that's how I understood the word warrant. And so, you know, it's just these little small things. Like I was so detached and not, now I'm so 
I'm not detached, but my thought process is there's just got to be other people out there who want to be involved, but just don't know if we can somehow empower those who would like to be involved, because the other piece of it is that some people just, they're not interested in local government, and that's fine. You can't push it on them. Some people want to be involved, but maybe a border committee is not the way that they want to go. So it's like, how do you keep people involved in local government if they don't want to sit on a board or, or committee, because that's really the only way. You know, the other piece of it, too, is like, how do you expect someone to want to be on a border committee if they feel like they weren't treated well when they came in to pay a bill or, or they were overhearing another committee meeting and they heard one of the committee members speak ill or, you know, use terms that <laughs> that were insulting to them. So, you know, part of that can be resolved through training. Some of that has to just, you know, it's a little bit of a cultural change. And so... That's kind of how it's just my own life experience, really. Okay, thank you. So, mm -hmm. may I just ask one quick, another just follow up question to that is mm -hmm. um, Have you found the schools or the school system to be a, an effective channel in, at, at all in reaching like the adults in the family or maybe the older students? Or how, how has that experience been for you if, if that's relevant? Um, so what I'm going to say, like, you know, one of the things about being a CPO is like, so now I'm on the PGO for the high school. And so I kind of, I've been, you know, on the PGO um, newsletter every week, I've been including the different events that are that are hosted by the town, like when we celebrated AAPI, when we celebrated Black History Month, I like to have those, you know, included into the, the high school PGO, which can get spread around to the, to the different schools but again i i you know the pgo kind of works the same as the town where it's a little bit of the same folks right and so um you know i know this year for juneteenth like we have a group of kids there's well not even for juneteenth so at the dei and crest um reception at groff park there were two high school students and so they both have um signed up to be on the human rights commission so you know we're going to I think that having youth on boards and committees is great. I know one of the things that the CPOs have wanted to do for a long time is have a youth center, like a youth civic committee or board commission. Um, and also we, I've been asked several times in for the out to go to the middle school to speak to the middle schoolers about civic engagement and diversity. And so that is a tough crowd because Earl and I both went and it was like crickets over there. But I think if we kind of styled it differently and, and, and changed the way that we our approach that it could be much more successful, like have them come to the town hall building first and kind of see what we do and then kind of then hit them up with the boring talk, right? So. Thank you. And yeah, Leah. Yeah, I was going to say that speaks to me a lot because I'm currently in high school and like definitely like um, between like youth and government, there's definitely like a big like I really had no idea like like all the like boards and things like I had no idea that this just like happens and my um, a teacher actually recommended this to me. So I think having like like just like as you said like in like morning announcements or going through like emails to students like I think that and especially like one-on-one -on -one connection because sometimes I feel like if there's like a thing in the announcements I would be less interested to do it if like than if like a friend told me about it so I think just like spreading word of mouth throughout the high school is like something that's interesting to me because I think a lot more people would be motivated to do this kind of work if they knew um, just like what it was. But yeah, thank you so much. And I feel like the aspect of the council that I think has been taken away a lot with COVID is like the community outreach element of it. But I feel like for me, that's like the most rewarding part is getting to see and talk with people. So I'm really looking forward to like partnering maybe with the DEP or DEI to um like do more like events and then continuing that now that some of the COVID restrictions are lifted. Sorry, I was muted. No, you're good. Um I was just gonna quickly say that, you know, one of the things is um so 
you know, Angela Mills is one of the community participation officers and both her kids and my kids are, you know, played sports. So often we can get the the athletic teams to be involved in some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, and so we could, should really expand that from just there, like have POKU or, or there's a business one. I don't know if it still exists at the high school or not, but the business, it's like business leaders of, of, of the school or something like that. But um, the different boards and committees like that, you know, and connecting with the teachers and, and their teacher liaison. So like if there's a business entity or at the school, at the high school, then having them meet up with our finance department, right? So like they can kind of understand how the local government works a little bit on a deeper level, or maybe business isn't the right one, but accounting, but something very similar to that, right? Um, and so I know, you know, um, the, my son plays lacrosse, so I know the lacrosse team is has been tasked with signed up for volunteering for Juneteenth, and we have the poetry slam group from the high school coming to perform on Juneteenth, and a couple of ARH graduates. So hopefully that'll motivate them. The other thing is, I think it's always easier when people see folks who they recognize. So at least when we're hiring. I know I try really hard if I'm on the hiring committee, if there's like a, a local person to, if they're qualified, of course, right? There's no bias really, but um, there, I think that there is value in hiring someone who is from our community. Um, you know, their faces are recognized more and, and it just kind of brings a different feel. So I think the, you know, those kind of things always are beneficial for the town. Um, and, and for some cases, it can help uh, reduce that, that lack of trust, right? So. so thank you, Jennifer. And again, I mean, I really, we just wanted to open this conversation. And, and you know, as Rachel said, not, not a kind of a one and done, but, you know, an ongoing relationship as, um, as you and Pamela, you know, sort of get your legs underneath you and start doing this work. And um, I mean, I think ACC, we're all, we're all kind of out there, um, you know, when it comes to community events, we try to attend as much as we can. Um, and we all, we're all representatives of, of the council. And so we try to get the word out. Um, but any help that you can, you know, any, any form that you can, that you see where it's like, boy, you know, we want to promote government in involvement. This is a pretty low risk, pleasant, you know, pleasant way to, to go about that. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's giving away state money for the arts. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's it's a pretty enjoyable way to to participate in in town government. Um, so I, I have a couple of things I want to just make sure that folks are aware of because because um, it affects us as a council. Um, but of course, we would certainly invite Jennifer uh, back again soon. Um, yeah. So so am, am I okay? You're you're good. I think. Are you ho are you hosting us though? Oh wait! If I close right now, everybody is done. Let me make that. I'll make you the host. Okay, we're flying without a liaison, so you know. Oh, wish do us you luck. need? I mean, I can stay if you need me to stay. I. No, I think this was. I think this was Angela's idea. So. We'll, okay. We'll do, our, we'll do our best. Thank you very much, Jennifer. All right. Thank you so yeah. much. Bye guys, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Bye. Um, and so uh, I, I'll just go through the items that we had put out on the on the agenda. Um, actually, there's nothing nothing that needs action, but but we just needed to know and, and talk about it a little bit. So I don't believe we have any grant amendments that need to be acted on. I didn't find anyone, Robin, correct? Not that I'm aware of. However, when I saw Cindy last week. She said she's, since she's no longer an employee, she no longer can get into the email, which means our email. So there, I don't know if you've been being forwarded any email or you can get we're, into it. Or we're working have, very, very hard. Well, Julie right, so I'm saying there might be some that came in that we don't know, you know about. It's, it's a little bit stressful. We use the town's email address as our, our primary point of contact. And uh, there's been a little bit of a lag on that. Hopefully, between myself, Julianne, Robin, and others who have been who have helped with grantees, folks are reaching out on more than one forum. But right. the, there's been a there's been a glitch on the town side, which then has restricted access. That jumps to <laughs> another item on the agenda. So um, first hey, things Matt. first, Cindy. Yes, ma'am. Real real quickly, 
um, I believe that all of the folks that we're requiring an amendment from, we have correspondence with them directly in our in our personal email. So I'm not overly concerned uh, right. because I, I believe, yeah, that that our personal emails have been on copy as, as well. So uh, they they should know where to get a hold of us, even if they're not hearing from us. So I, I just think it, nothing's come in. But I don't know. I do want to know. Well, yeah. I want to resolve it with the right. town. But I, I I'm pretty pretty sure that you know, they know how to get a hold of us. Yeah, I, I'm hopeful. I mean, that's assuming that, you know, <laughs> but that's, so that's assuming that there's nobody who wants to change things that we don't know about, but, right. you know, like oh, you said. Oh, true, we, yeah, yeah. But the ones where we're, where the, the funds are, are not distributed because they need an extension, we've been directly in contact with them. Yeah, that's right, so, that's right. Yeah. And I, I think it's unlikely that anybody would give up. But, so we're, we're, we are, we're, it, it, it's definitely an issue. We are working on it. Um, the underlying issue there, of course, is that Cindy has left mm -hmm. for greener pastures, which is very sad. And thanks to everybody who helps contribute. We, Robin, thank you for, or Julian, both of you for pulling that together. And, and um, we did give her a, some flowers, I think, and a card or something like that. Um, it was two big things of peonies and irises and tulip peonies, I think. Anyway, she was very happy and moved and and I put a card in thanking her for her help and her quiet wisdom and strength because that's how I view it and um you know, wishing her well from all of us um so she's sad to leave but she's really excited yeah it's a great opportunity for her and so our our liaison officially right now is Angela Mills who is Paul's you know uh, executive assistant which means she has a lot on her plate as it is. And um, if you happen to know any town employees, <laughs> uh, I think that this is a standing program. I believe there's a stipend for it. I'm sure there's a stipend for them. Well, I'm not sure. I, I believe there is. Is that wrong? I, I believe there's a, but it's a standing program for them to all be assigned as liaisons. Um, so, you know, please put the word out. I mean, they, they literally, they were like, do you have anybody that you'd like to be your liaison? And I said, well, the children's librarian has been wonderful with my son, but and that's about as far as I know after <laughs> two and a half years in town. So, so if you can think of anybody, um, you know, and, and kind of gently persuade them, we we do need a we do need a liaison because um, that's really an important function for us in terms of working with the town manager's office and the um, and the town office. So then, the next thing that follows from that, of course, is memberships. Um, so. Uh, we we are we will have three vacancies um, this summer F four vacancies this summer. Leah, we are hoping that you're going to be accepting our um, request that you join as a voting member, um, which will leave us at three. Oh. So, but you know that's that's substantial because if we have eight if we have eight voting members and and uh, three vacancies, I'm sorry. You know, we, we really we really need full we need full participation to get to a quorum. Um, and in the summer, we can survive the summer without you know that that's okay. But but when we get into the fall and we start having the um, the grant making cycle, we really have to have that sort of voting quorum um, regularly. Um, How many do we have to have to be an official committee that can make decisions? So we're a nine person body, so we have to have five. We have to. Have Okay. for a quorum yeah so even if we had four vacancies but all five showed up um you know we could still we could still act but that's a lot of pressure on us you know i mean we all have lives and emergencies and so you know counting on full participation every single meeting is, is a lot um i am going to follow up with an email to jennifer too uh, to try to get um you know to encourage her to help us with the recruiting since she's doing so much out and about and i think i think she'll be game hi leah yeah, and why don't why don't I go ahead and introduce Leah since she's here and her hand is oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so Leah, I, Leah is our town um, grants ARPA grant <laughs> manager. Uh, and and but go ahead, please. I just had a question about membership in terms of being on the committee. If it has to be a town member or not, it has to they be do. a town resident. Town resident. Okay. Yeah, and that's been that's been a challenge for us because we had a couple of people moving just you know one just one town over just one right. Town. <laughs> we'd have to get a um, an exception from the from the town council for for folks to okay serve out of town out of towners so to speak 
Okay, just wondering, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, thank you. Um, so we have a couple more minutes before six. Um, do we wanna set up a, a time and a date for our July meeting now so that we don't have to do that at the very end? Are we having a July meeting? Well, I have. I, I would ask that question. I would. I would say no, except um, you <laughs> yes. know we, right. we sort of set the stage to work towards the um, accessibility roundtable. You know, we set those funds aside, and that is something that needs attention. Um, and then, of course, getting our new grant application up and running. I mean, that's you know, that's always just sort of a, a running question, but. Mm -hmm. I, I also, I mean, I hesitate to say this because I, I know people have varying feelings about subcommittees. Um, I, I do think that it might be smart to do a little ad hoc accessibility subcommittee for the sake of getting that round table squared away. Um, and that way we don't need a full quorum of the, of the council and we can be sure we're doing it. Um, if we don't do it, then the funds just go back to the general pool and we distribute them next year. So it's not like, it's not like that money disappears if we don't do it. But I also feel like we made a commitment to it, at least you know, a tentative commitment to it. Um, and, and we had that great event with Charles Baldwin. Feels like something we, we should build on the momentum. Um, so I would be willing to serve on a subcommittee towards that end and, um, and, and others, you know, if, if others are also willing. This is a subcommittee within our committee, with our within the council, or is it like working with a broader committee? Sorry, I. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be a sub a subgroup of our group. And we're, Julianne, we're such a to, small, we're such a small group to do a <laughs> subgroup. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, one but one it, thing is, it might it it might be more realistic as far as July, considering that we still need a liaison. I mean, we could potentially schedule it and not even be able to get someone to to host the call um so we we might go ahead and let july go from that perspective but then we'd have to be able to commit to definitely august because we you know we do need to do an overhaul of of um the uh requirements uh, nice. that's not the right word the, the guidelines thank you so i want well to just clarify because you're right, it's, it is kind of funny to think about a subcommittee of a small group, but a subcommittee allows us to meet without a quorum. So I actually think there is, there's a good, and we have good sort of good experience with those last year. Um, so I, I, would, I would, I mean, I would say if we don't meet as a council in July, which might be wise given vacation schedules and, and everything else that we, we do agree to do a, a subcommittee. Um, yeah. So I would be willing to to uh, to serve on that, and I know Julianne would as well. Um, we can, if it's not going to be a, an official council meeting, we still need to post it, but we can determine that. Christy. Yeah, I can do it. Okay, great. Thank you. So we can we'll determine the date by email, and we'll get it posted through Angela. Um, but why don't we hold off on a July meeting for the sake of vacation schedules and, and not wanting to worry about a quorum? Because it is stressful to not know if you're gonna have a quorum or not. Um, and then do we, do we wanna throw a date on the calendar for August then? Just, just so we don't have to do that. That decision is hard over email when you're trying to get a quorum locked in. I'm, I'm also fine not doing it. I just feel like it's, it's, I hate, I hate walking away from a meeting and not knowing when our next one is, because it just means the email chains get long. Are, are people okay with the second half of August or no? Any time for me, doesn't matter. I mean, we're still on Zoom, August. right? Yeah, still on Zoom. Okay. The, the town is supposed to re revisit in July, but we don't have any news, so I would assume for now that it's in. Infection, infection rates are rising, so. Can I toss out the second Tuesday, the sixth, or I guess that's the Tuesday, Nine. the 16th? The second Tuesday is the 9th in August. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm sorry. So the third Tuesday. <laughs> 
So I, I could do either one of those. It sounds like Christy could do either one. Does anybody have a, a preference? I could do either. I, I prefer the later one, please. All right, so why don't we say the 16th? Um, and do folks like five o'clock or can we, or back to six or some other time? Five for Christy. I know Julianne prefers five. Five. Rachel, okay. Please. Five, five o'clock on the 16th. Okay, well, wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, our town finance director and uh, I will reintroduce our town uh, ARPA grant manager, um, Sean Mangano and Leah Carver. And I'm just gonna turn it over to them to talk about this uh, economic empowerment. I'm gonna call it an initiative just because I'm not sure what the exact noun is, but it's, it's a use of our federal ARPA funds uh, in the service of, of economic empowerment with a big cultural component to it. Um, and I'll just turn it over. I'll be honest, I was kind of hoping Leah was gonna was going to get this done by the time I got here. Uh, so I guess, I guess you waited till six. Exactly. That's perfect. We uh, stall for you. <laughs> sorry, the Jones Library Building Committee, another cultural you know organization going on. So, um, all right, I'm going to share my screen so we can talk through this a little bit. Can you all, I'll make this bigger. You, can you see that on the screen, the Word document? Yeah, that's great. Okay. So, um, so thank you all for having us and uh, thank you for being one of the early uh, groups that we met with when we were doing some of the, um, the listening sessions related to ARPA and uh, back, I don't know, Matt, when it was, but I want to say maybe spring 2021 or summer 2021, sometime around there when we first met um, and got feedback from, the, from this council. Um, and so that feedback really helped direct some of what we did with the ARPA money or how we allocated it. And some of the, the themes that I, I took from that meeting and from subsequent uh, feedback that came from the council um, was that the artist community, A, needed a central point of contact or sort of some streamlining around um, how, how to access certain uh, either um, pieces of equipment like staging, uh, access areas of the town for um, events, um, just one place to go to, to make it clear how they can uh, complete whatever they're looking to complete um, and that the, the current system was a little disjointed. Um, I th we also heard that you know, there's sort of different cultural groups uh, that represent artists downtown. Um, and again, having a central point of contact that can kind of bring some of those groups together would be helpful. Um, and then I think the final thing we heard is just someone who can promote and create opportunities for local artists to, um, you know, obviously have some economic um, benefit and some gain um, and to put, create these events where local artists can come and, um, and do whatever they do. Uh, so one of the things we looked at coming out of that uh, first session, and I thank Matt for kind of directing me to it, was what Northampton does. And so Northampton has a cultural, I think they, they call it a cultural director or arts and culture director. Um, and so we looked at that position and, and that job description and tried to, we know we couldn't do all of it, but we tried to carve out pieces that we thought went together and that um, we might be able to accomplish um, uh, with this grant. So um, going from there, we originally thought we were going to hire a person uh, internally, but as we've gone through and getting feedback from the council, we're, we're trying not to um, cr uh, hire people uh, with funds that may be temporary. Uh, so we've been looking for contracts or to work with organizations that might be able to provide some of these services um, and maybe leverage other grant funds into the future to con uh, continue these services. So we put together this sort of economic empowerment initiative, which uh, brings in three sort of primary economic um, goals for the town. Uh, one is supporting local artists and cultural organizations. The second is supporting entrepreneurs. And the third is building economic, um, uh, building on economic partnerships with the college and uh, the colleges and universities. So tonight I'm just going to focus on sort of that first theme, but it's all sort of the same bucket of funds that's go, uh, that we, we think at this point we're going to contract out. 
Um, so what you see on the screen, this first paragraph here, this first uh, bulleted list, these are the responsibilities or the tasks that we're asking uh, the, uh, the, the contractor um, to provide. So serve as the central point of contact for the local artist community, including local boards and councils, including, so that would include this one. Uh, provide leadership and support in marketing, fundraising, and pu uh, public relations for local events. Maintain strong relationships with area artists and work on projects that are beneficial to the arts community and the general public. Organize regular community events that showcase local artists, providing them with an economic benefit. Collaborate with local cultural organizations in the development of community events and um, other activities, or all activities that shall strive to reflect the different cultures of Amherst. Um, so this would be this would be what the the nonprofit or the, the contractor would have to do. And we've allocated funds for the next two years, possibly longer, but right now the funds would um, allow these services to be provided through the end of FY24, which is um, June 30th of 2024. Uh, but again, it's possible if it's successful that we could continue it um, for another, potentially up to another two years. Um, the next piece below, so one of the things when we set this up, um, and, and this is really core to the ARPA grant, is that we needed to think of ways to hold people accountable that these things actually get done. And, you know, it's not just, you know, either continuing to do what they're already doing or, um, so we, aside from actually having actual benchmarks and actual goals, we built in some additional pieces into this sort of contract or framework that we've developed. Um, so one of the things that we will be asking uh, the grantee or who, the person who gets awarded these funds is to develop an evaluation tool that tracks progress towards these types of initiatives, um, something that we can measure. Um, so it includes some sort of baseline and then tracking it um, on a, a, I think it's quarterly basis, the, uh, the reporting for this program. Yes. Um, and then the other piece is that um, the grantee will put together an annual report that really kind of brings together all the initiatives they've been working on um, that can be presented to the town manager and potentially the town council. And then the town manager can decide based on that annual report, are, you know, is the town getting the, the value for what it's putting forward? So we'd be looking to make sure that there's, there's tangible um, progress being made uh, for each of the initiatives. And so, yeah, so that's sort of where we're at. Um, right now we are, um, so the, the group that we have um, been in contact with, or the groups that we've been in contact to uh, potentially perform this uh, contract would be the bid in the chamber. Um, they both sort of, you know, have connections downtown and throughout Amherst and they've, um, you know, they, they've already been supporting the arts and culture scene in a lot of ways uh, as it is. And so um, in a lot of ways they make sense um, we haven't executed a contract yet, but we're, we're moving towards that. And so I'm happy to answer any questions or feedback. If there's, you know, if there's, we can't make, I wouldn't say major changes to this right now, but if there's, if there's things you think within these themes that we should clarify or, or highlight, um, we can certainly still do that. There's still time to, um, to make those changes. So, so selfishly, I'm going to just ask a question that um, <laughs> relates to our previous discussion. So uh, currently, Angela Mills is filling in as our liaison. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just thinking about, again, you know, how, how Northampton does it, not to say that that's, you know, this position is very different than what their person does. I think your vision for it is, is uniquely Amherst. Yeah, um, sure. But I, I do think that a you know, somebody in this role, um, one nice concrete job function that they could have would be to be a liaison to the Amherst Cultural Council, mm -hmm. um, you know, which, and, and Cindy, Cindy really was fabulous for us. I mean, I can't say that enough. Uh, I think somebody who's, whose job function, like their day-to-day -day job function was centered around, you know, arts and entertainment and, and culture um, would be even maybe, you know, it'd be a dip, slightly different direction, but I think would be appropriate for us, especially if we're trying to merge the, you know, or, or at least overlap some of the, mm -hmm. some of the events that the various cultural institutions do. Um, so I would, I would put that out there. And I, the reason I, I put it out there now is, you know, that that's kind of a change from the existing town liaison structure. And so it'd have to be something that, you know, you guys would have to consider internally and see if you're comfortable with it. But I think 
that might kill two birds with one stone in terms of, you know, our 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 need, and then you know, giving this position a really clear some really clear responsibilities. Yeah, I, I like that idea. I think we I think we will have to think about whether it's in addition to the town liaison as opposed to in um, instead of the town liaison, um, just because there's some things like you know related to the grants. Um, and, and things like that, that we may still want the town, the direct town presence there. Um, yeah. But I can certainly, I certainly think it makes sense that this person would be at these meetings. Um, th these meetings are monthly, is that once a month, these meetings? More or less, yeah. Well, or, well yeah. actually important caveat. So more <laughs> or less most of the year, but for about two months, we meet about once a week. If, when so, you're reviewing the grant applications. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, no, I think that that's something that totally makes sense and we will, um, we will clarify that understanding before we move forward with uh, the, the contract. And I totally get the point. If it's a subcontractor, you may want to have a town liaison present as well. Right. Yes. Yeah. So how does this tie in with what we do or or that with us to them or them to us? And how can we contribute to each other and support each other and um, yeah, I think that's a, from each other. That's a good question. I mean, I think we'll get as much out of this as we put into it. So I think I could see early on, once it starts, is inviting the person to the cultural council to sort of have an initial sort of uh, kickoff meeting um, and to talk about the ways that you can partner. You know, I could see this committee, um, you know, bringing any issues you're hearing from the arts. Uh, um, the arts, I'm blank on the word, community um, to this person to see if there's, you know, if there's problems or issues that you hear they're uh, dealing with that maybe this position could help address. Um, if you know events are coming up and you need help with pub uh, publicizing it, if there's events coming up and you need help with um, getting, you know, getting the space rented or the, you know, if there's just the stage uh, put together, depending on what it is, um, all those types of things, I could see this council or the artist directly going to this position. That's another thing that I'll say, and, and of course, folks, feel free to, to you know, jump in, but I, um, you know, I, I think we've, we've been very focused on just the grant making, Co you know, COVID has really changed things a lot. So we've been focused on the grant making, focus on the accessibility. Um, we have an event, this uh, we have a Pecha Kucha event that past few years we've not been able to put on. So, so really the ACC hasn't put on anything, in, you know, in person or we've had a couple of virtual events, I suppose. But I think um, at least I just speak for myself as a, as a member, I would be interested in, you know, starting to move back towards some kind of, you know, events where we're showcasing the work of, of the artists in, in town. Um, so, you know, another area where I think having somebody who was able to do this during their workday would would help, you know, because we're a volunteer group. And for those couple of months where we're reviewing grants, it does feel like a second job for, a, I mean, it really, the, it's, a, it's a lot of time that we commit at that time. Um, so, yeah, just yeah. another point. And just building off that, again, if there's events you think maybe this group can't put on, but you think it should happen in the town. Um, you know, maybe we can always learn from neighbors and other communities. If, you know, if you become aware of a really nice event that another community is doing that you think would be great for Amherst, um, that's again, it's one of the things we could, we could try to get this position to take on um, as sort of organizing that type of event. Rachel. Yes, hi, just a uh, clarifying question. Does the town employee, the, the, the person doesn't need to be a full-time employee right now, right? This position that we're talking about here? Yeah. Um, so it, this position doesn't, it, it may not be a full-time employee or maybe part of a full-time employee's position. It won't be a town employee. It'll be a employee of the um, the bid or the chamber. Oh, um, I see, I yeah. see. But, okay. it'll, but it, it'll likely be part of somebody's responsibility. Um, so somebody who's a current town employee, there's no conflict in them taking on this responsibility in addition to what they're doing for the town, or does that exclude them from? Um, well, they wouldn't. It's not a current, it's not it's a not, town it's, employee. Yeah, it's not going to be a town employee, period. It'll be, we will have a contract with the bid in the chamber who will hire somebody else 
to do this work. Right. That, yeah. What I'm, what my question is somebody who is a current town employee, who's working maybe just part-time for the town. Oh, gotcha. Would gotcha. they be eligible um, for this or is there some. They might be, I think it would depend on what they do for the town. And we'd, I mean, we could always, if, if that, um, if that issue pops up, we could get a opinion um, from, you know, it, it, what they, they probably could, whether mm -hmm. there's an ethical um, issue would probably depend on the position um, that they're currently in. So, but it so also, it's, okay. sorry, no, I was just going to say, so it's not um, automatically excluded or like, okay, it's, is, or is it kind of a fuzzy line that? Yeah, I would have to think about it more because um, again, the town would be contracting with a nonprofit. And what you're saying is, could an employee, an existing employee of the town also be a part-time employee of the nonprofit and um, fill this role? And I, I think I'd have to think about it more. I, we can talk with um, uh, sort of our human resources department, maybe get look and see if there's any rulings about that. Um, again, I think it would sort of depend what the position is, but um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not aware of any current situations like that. Thank but you. Also, the idea is to have it be a full-time position with the bid in the chamber. So right, right. So, so good example of that. Um, not many people will probably. <laughs> yeah. So like, I know, for example, we've, uh, we've contracted, like we've bought stuff from Atkins and I know there's some town employees that also worked at Atkins uh, during the, during the summer or whatever. Um, but I think if it was sort of, again, if, if their role here was doing art, um, arts and culture, which I don't think it is, cause we don't, I don't think we have a dedicated position to that. Um, but, and then a contract with them doing that same thing somewhere else. I think that would be an issue, but if they're two completely unrelated positions, it might not be, but um, don't quote me on it for sure. So when will this position be in place or at least hiring committee looking so, or something? Yeah, so, um, so I don't know exactly about the position because it ultimately will be up the bit, up to the bid in the chamber to, to give us the plan, the staffing plan for how they're going to accomplish these tasks. Um, but we hope to get this contract signed or, or executed, I'd say in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's, we've been working on this for a while, so. So yeah, we hope to have, be able to start doing something tangible around this, you know, midsummer, um, you know, maybe fall at the latest to start actually seeing some benefits from this. And so your, your contractor would then post, you know, they, they would hire for a grant funded position for two to three years. And, and then that would be kind of a normal hiring timeline from there, hopefully. Right. They would, um, yeah, if, if the, again, I don't know what their existing staffing looks like, but um, right. Right. if they're, um, they would, again, they, they, they're aware that these funds are theoretically only through FY24 right now. And we've told them if it works well, which we hope it does, there's potentially funds beyond that um, to make it maybe a, uh, through the end of, 2026 or through June of 2026. Any other um, any other sort of specific things that you think we should make get, uh, ensure gets covered through this? So I, I like the idea about making sure that the person participates in these meetings, um, and and I you know I think we've kind of clarified that you can funnel feedback and, and requests to them. Um, if there's anything else that I'm trying to think back to what we heard, if there's anything else that you can think of specifically, if, if not tonight, certainly email it to us. Um, you know, if you get it to us before the end of the week, we, we're not going to have the contract signed this week, so we can, um, we can still work on it. Well, selfishly, I think these meetings are the most important ones, but I would also say that like the, um, uh, the cultural district, um, the uh, downtown Amherst Foundation has an arts component, I believe. So, so all, because I, I know the vision is a unifying type position. So, you know, as much as possible to be in attendance at, at all of those various groups meetings. And I think just helping to kind of find, find synergy, cross pollinate ideas, you know, connect, connect people. Um, I just, I just think that that's for us. I mean, that's, that's really core and, um, I, I'm, I'm, I think the thing that I'm most ex or most intrigued by is how you all have wrapped in the university functions to it. Um, and I think that's something that's really evolved with you over time. And 
I just want to share with you and or somebody else might do a better job, but this year, you know, I think there was an old clause in our guidelines that basically ruled out students. It, you know, basically said the grant, you know, this grant will not go for, for your degree program. And so people who, who thought outside the box could say, well, you know, it is my degree program, but it's also, and then they would be also is what we would judge them on. But I think historically it's, it's been, you know, we've not been giving grants to students much, um, at least in the past four or five years. But this year we had two or three uh, students that made really compelling cases for their like thesis projects mm -hmm. that also had, whether it's a second performance in town or, you know, really directive outreach to community members in town. Um, we had, we've had fabulous membership. Leah is in the high school, but um, we had a fabulous Amherst College member who just actually left the country, <laughs> sadly. But, you know, so, so I, I think we as a council are, again, I speak for myself, but we would be really open to, you know, um, deepening our late partnerships with the schools, both in terms of, I feel like I'm on repeat because I said the same thing to DEI, to Jennifer, both in terms of grantees, but also uh, members of the council. So, so that's just an area that, you know, this person, um, a, a way that we could, we'd be happy to work with the, the colleges, I guess. Makes sense. One last thing, Sean, and then sure. I think I'll be done um, with my questions for now. Uh, there's also the small, the, um, the grants that are administered through the, um, uh, the bid, uh, small business grants. Some of those, I think arts and culture institutions might be eligible for. Um, yeah, so I think they, so there's two, um, well, there's, there's three grant programs. So there is um, a startup grant program. So this would be for uh, businesses that don't currently exist. Um, and so, you know, biz, uh, businesses, if they were related to um, uh, some sort of uh, art, yeah, would be able to apply for that. Um, the, there's a growth grant, so existing businesses can also apply. Um, and, and these funds are, so the startup, obviously, it's to help them start up. With growth, it's to help them um, grow their business or to expand their business in some way or um, make some sort of efficiency that helps them have a more successful business. Um, and then the last one is technical assistance, which can kind of be for either um, either group, which is if somebody just needs like an architect or an engineer or somebody to come and provide some sort of evaluation of a uh, maybe a space, for example, if they're looking to um, go into a space. Uh, we've heard some issues in the past where people will sign a lease, not really knowing if their business can go into the space. And then they, they sign the lease and they're locked in and then find out they can't. And so we wanted to try to avoid that by uh, providing this sort of upfront evaluation for uh, potential businesses so they don't get trapped in a lease that they can't um, that they can't actually do their business. Um, so yeah, those potentially uh, are open to any, um, to existing businesses and, and pr prospective new businesses. I, I think there's probably some overlap with some of our grantees too. So we, you know, mm -hmm. um, if the, has the bid already put out that applica those applications or is that still in more? So the, uh, the growth one is out, Leah, is that correct? Yes, it's the open growth. until June 30th. Right. The other thing I'll, I'll just make this group aware of because I know, um, you know, the arts field can be challenging sometimes, um, and especially during COVID. Um, the other thing that's gonna be going out soon is a resident emergency aid program. And so we're working with Family Outreach of Amherst uh, to administer a program where if um, a resident of town hits some sort of financial struggle, um, there's gonna be uh, potentially some grants for that as well um, to help pay you know, for overdue mortgage payments or utility payments, things like that. Um, so, you know, we're trying to help the businesses, but we also want to help residents as well. So that program, um, all these will be rolling out. Either they're currently out there, or they'll be rolling out in the next month or so. And how would someone um, apply for that? The resident emergency that? one? Yeah, because I know a few people who really are. Yeah, um, so we're actually having a meeting with Family Outreach of Amherst tomorrow to talk about, um, so we have, our, we have our agreement signed with them, and now we're ready to say, how do we publicize this to people and, and how do they apply? Um, so th there will be some sort of application form um, that's developed, or, and they would meet with Family Outreach of Amherst, who would, would go through the process with them. Um, we'll leave, I'll make a note, Leah, and you and I, neither one of us forget to send the information back to this group once we um, have more 
a uh, better sense of the timing, but it should be, I would say this month. Um, and yeah, it'll be publicized on the town website and, and pushed out through social media once it's available. Great, uh, Leah. Um, I was going to say we've been talking throughout this whole year and also just our last thing with the DEI about um, finding outreach, both like um, outreach to the community with like social media and um, that kind of outreach, and then also outreach um, to like other people on councils, like in terms of diversity and accessibility and things like that. So having a liaison who might be sitting in to like other arts meetings and hearing things and then kind of like reporting back or someone who's maybe goes and connects us with like a DEI thing that's kind of connected through this arts thing sounds really interesting because we've been talking a lot about um, making connections with other people. So that just seems like um, a super cool way to further that. So thank you. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, all right, well, Sean and uh, Leah Carver, thank you all both very much. I know it's been a long day, so um, thank we you. appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. And again, if you have any other ideas, um, send them to us or send them to Matt and he knows how to get them to us. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Um, and so I think, Unless there's any uh, any other business that folks have, um, Rachel or oh, Robin, sorry, sorry. Julian, was there some information from Amherst Media, or or not? Uh, that's a little bit slow moving. I actually need to um, connect with Matt about that. Um, but they did send us over a release form. Um, but uh, honestly, I I. Um, Need to follow up on that. Thank you. Okay, so but nothing we need to jump that in. Okay. And the other so, one is um, Jenny. Happy birthday. Oh. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're doing at the meeting. <laughs> She's being a wonderful public servant. Yes. Is this your last meeting or? You're I can't muted, hear uh, her. You're muted, Jenny. Mm. We can't hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry. There you are. you are. Thank you for the birthday wishes. I am happy to be here. I'm not sure if this is my, if June mm -hmm. or July, but mm. yeah. I, I guess I'll have to look at the list and see. Well, I was going to ask one thing of both Jenny and I'll say it, Arthur, because I, I want, you know, um, so Je both Jenny and Arthur will be rolling off for different oh, reasons. Arthur, too. And, uh, Arthur. Sadly. Yeah. And, and we do have, you know, we have permission from the town manager's office to to extend until we fill those those slots. Yeah. So, you know, just so you all know, um, and the same thing with Joy as well, I, I think. So, so. Yeah. You know, obviously you, you're you're free to go, but but we're hoping to get. Um, it's just it's just all moving a little bit slow with the liaison transition and and other things. Um, so we don't have any interviews scheduled. I know there are candidates in the in the shoot, so it's just a question of getting them getting getting all scheduled. So yeah. we'd, we'd love to have you for another month or two until we can do a, a transfer. But totally understand. I mean, you know, please don't feel pressure to do so. Um, I'm I'm happy to stay until. Everything's all settled, so. I'll have to put some thought into it because I have like a lot of work coming up and travel for work too, actually. So I'll have to let you know, I'll, I'll think about it. Okay, all right, totally understood, Arthur. So Matt, um, there are people who are interested? Like Yeah, I think it's, I think yeah. Angela was, was making a couple more passes in terms of whatever recruiting, you know, arm she has, but I, I do know that she's got, she's got some names on there. Um, yeah. So I'm just asked someone, well, his grandmother to ask him because I don't know how to reach him. He might be interested. And that would be awesome. He helped organize the powwow. It's, it's like works with a lot of disability stuff and indigenous stuff. And so Great. we'll Great. see. I'm not sure if he's interested, but he might be. Great. 
I, I um, also in terms have of a couple Leah friends. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Go for it. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Quickly ask if I wanted to go up to like a full voting member, um, should I fill out? Because I remember I filled out like some forms before being like, what's the process for that? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. So we, we did check that with um, Angela Mills uh, when this idea first, by, which by the way, this idea came up a long time ago. Um, she just needs a recommendation from us, from the co-chairs and, and she's there in support because you've already been through the interview process. So I don't need to go through an interview? Nope. No, right. but you might need to sign the affidavit or whatever it is that we had to sign and yeah, oh, yeah there's point. some training yeah. too there's a yeah there's yeah, i think i already did that though i think okay I think um so. so leah we'll send that email just to say that you're you're willing and thank you very much um so and much. then i think yeah, you know you they'll let you know what if there's anything else you need to do yeah. um so do our other two high schoolers want to remain on? No, uh, no. Nandi, Nandi regretfully said that she had, she does have a lot of commitments, she had a lot of commitments and she just wasn't able to do it. Okay. Sydney, honestly, we haven't heard from Sydney in, in a year and a half. So uh, we're going to take that, we're just going to take it as a, a non-interest. So should we seek out two other, uh, what we're talking about, 10th, 11th, 10th graders? Well, maybe, but I think let's with Angela's schedule the way it is right now. I, I, I think we should probably just try to get that. I don't know. You know what? I, I take it back. Maybe I'm being pessimistic, but I just mm -hmm. I want to get these voting slots filled. Um, yeah. That and that's and I don't. I just don't want to throw anything else at Angela. But if anybody wants to recruit any tenth graders on the side, <laughs> that's still ending it might be harder. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can talk about putting it maybe in like morning announcements or something like that. Oh, that would yeah. be cool. That'd be very cool. Sorry, I didn't mean I didn't mean, mean to be negative on the idea. Just yeah, just, just, just so trying to stay focused on the the voting slots. But but you're right. We we should continue to recruit because non-voting spots become voting spots, right? And that's mm -hmm. that's a wonderful thing. Um, and then uh, Rachel did put in the chat about the minutes. I apologize. I Cole took them last month, and I just didn't send them out. So I will I'll have to send. We'll have to a bet approve May and June in, when we meet in August. I, I have minutes for tonight. I didn't catch all of what Sean talked about because he went really fast. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you guys can approve that part or <laughs> maybe he'll share that. He can share that with us as well. Okay, yeah. Good. Just so we're kind of clear on, on that. I, it, it sounds like it's it's morph morphing anyway into whatever it's going to be, and we'll we'll learn more when they hire somebody. To yeah. yeah, I think that's right. Well, thank you all very much, um, and yeah. we'll connect again in August, if not if not before then. Sounds great. It was nice to see you all. Else. It's you been too, a couple Jenny. months, so all right. Be well. Bye, everyone. Go have a happy birthday. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>